Who doesn't love new bike day? I must admit that I do. It's one of my favourite days of all time, along with winning the lottery, being presented with the Nobel Prize for Physics and breaking that weird little paper seal thing on a new jar of coffee. Sadly for me, it only happens once every few years or so, but I suppose that's better than nothing. Some people though never get to enjoy this very special day, as one of their main problems is deciding what bike to buy. Now this can be quite a conundrum, even if you have a so-called normal body size, but for us larger, heavier cyclists it can make it an almost impossible choice. On the one hand we want a cool bike that we'll enjoy riding, but on the other we don't want something that's just going to fall apart after five minutes, or worse still, fold like a concertina when we're riding it. Well the good news is that no matter how heavy you are, there will be a bike for you. Now obviously you may have to make a few compromises depending on how heavy you actually are, but generally speaking if you want to get out and about on two wheels or even three it should be fairly easy to find something suitable. The even better news is that as heavier riders we don't really need to worry too much about the weight of the bike and its components and that of course translates to it being less expensive. Cycling can be the domain of the weight weenies who fret about a gram off this set of wheels or if this bottle cage is going to be a gnat's chaff lighter than that one and of course they will be paying top dollar for this weight saving. By contrast, if we want to save weight, it makes so much more sense to try and lose it from the old beer and pizza muscle first. Now I'm not going to start listing specific manufacturers and models because they change so quickly. Instead, I'll be giving you the information you need to consider when looking at potential new bikes and then hopefully you'll have enough information to make up your own minds. As a heavy rider myself, the main bike problem I have is with rear wheels. Over the last few months I've popped a spoke, broken two free hubs and cracked a rim. Now to be fair, all of these things have happened on wheels that were at least six years old. Some of them were even older. And it's also the sort of problem that any cyclist, regardless of weight, can expect due to general wear and tear. Although of course being just that bit heavier can speed this process up considerably. Interestingly, and I'll mention no names, I recently called the UK HQ of one of the world's leading bike manufacturers and they told me that none of their wheels have a weight limit. Make of that what you will. As a general rule of thumb, us larger riders should go for wheels with a higher spoke count. Riding sexy wheels with 16 spokes might make you look cool, but you'll quickly turn into the village idiot when those spokes start pinging like a broken piano the moment you hit the first pothole. Regular rear wheels generally have 24 spokes, and for many heavy riders this may be enough. For extra peace of mind though, you could always go for a 32 or even a 36 count. Similarly, the wider and deeper the rims, the stronger the wheel again, so a 28mm is going to be just that bit better than a traditional 24mm. And then if the whole thing can be hand built as well, you're maximising the chances of that wheel being as strong as it possibly can be. The next thing to think about is frame material. Now I'm going to be a little controversial here and say that if you're below 120 kilos or 19 stone or 165 pounds, I'm so international, you can pretty much choose any frame material you like, carbon, aluminium alloy, even steel or titanium, as each will be more or less as strong as each other. Again, the main deciding factor will be cost. But having said that, 
I would also strongly suggest that you do some thorough research by looking at the manufacturer's own spec sheet and specifically at their maximum weight limit. This will vary by manufacturer and even model and it's very, very important never to exceed it. At best, you might void any warranty, while at worst, you could have a catastrophic failure that could result in injury or even death. If you want to play safe, I personally would suggest going for the cheaper frame materials such as aluminium alloy and a slightly heavier bike, as heavier generally means stronger. But again, always check the manufacturer's maximum recommended weight limit. Similarly, I would also suggest looking closely at the forks. Many alloy frame bikes come supplied with carbon forks, and while that in itself might not be too much of an issue, having a carbon steerer might be. Again, always try to go with an alloy steerer if possible, as it will reduce the risk of it breaking. If you weigh more than 120 kilos, your choice starts to become limited if you want a road bike. In which case, you might want to consider something like a gravel or a mountain bike or even a recumbent trike, as they're designed to be much, much stronger than road bikes. You can still ride these on the road, although there might be a little extra rolling resistance, making them slightly slower. Thanks to things like gravity and inertia, us heavier riders take considerably longer to stop than our lighter chums when we apply the brakes, which is why having a good effective set is vital. Currently, there are two main choices of braking systems available, rim and disc. Traditional rim brakes have been around for decades and are tried and tested. If adjusted correctly, they could be more than strong enough to stop even the heaviest of riders. Now, based on my own experience, I would say that disc brakes are just that little bit more effective. Plus, they do not cause any wear and tear on the wheel rims. They might be a little bit more expensive, but for the added peace of mind they provide, I think they're more than worth it. Any cyclist will tell you that riding uphill is hard. To be fair, it's hard if you're 65 kilos and it just gets progressively harder the heavier you are, which is why gear selection is so important. Many bikes these days have a choice of gear ratios, so if possible, always try to choose one with a compact chain set. That's to say it will have a 50 tooth outer ring and a 34 tooth inner ring on the front and something like an 11 to 30 on the back. If you look closely, it should even tell you how many teeth each cog in the system has. This will make climbing so much easier, allowing you to spin uphill rather than mashing the gears. Now, of course, no discussion about bikes for heavier riders would be complete without mentioning e-bikes. While I'm no expert, I have ridden an e-road bike and I actually own an e-mountain bike. And I would say that the benefits would be that it takes away any fears that you may have about keeping up with others or being able to get up the climbs. Even though it is an e-bike, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's designed for heavier riders. You should still pay very close attention to the weight limits of things like the frame and the wheels. So there we go. That hopefully has provided you with the information you need to choose your next bike. Happy new bike day when it happens and thanks for watching.